Let's dive into some of the next generation of AI and robotics. It's getting crazy. Like I originally was putting this video together thinking like, let's see how close robots are to replacing a bunch of different human jobs in different verticals. But then when you look at the cutting edge of robotics, you kind of start thinking, wow, that robot's like really interesting and useful, but that would completely change the way like our economy works or things are built or the way we deliver things. Like from straight left field, there's robots that you can drop out of a drone and because of like the way origami shapes naturally fit together, like proteins in our body, just falling through the air, the robots can like origami fold into different shapes. Robots can look like just a bunch of like Play-Doh, which is a magnetic slime, but because it's magnetic, it can be like shaped from a magnetic field. And like, that's a completely different type of robot. And its use cases are not just gonna be like, replace the human with the humanoid robot. It's gonna be like, let the slime mold do some stuff that we've never seen before. And that can almost be like T2000, like shapeshifter stuff you know and there's these like dude perfect-esque like throwing robots that made me just think of like how profoundly different delivery could be with like hyper accurate throwing like they're fun to watch now but they actually at scale could be like super useful so let's go look at these cutting edge completely out of left field robots Let's start with the precision throwing. This is just crazy. Now I have been in awe of the robots that shoot basketballs, like super perfect arches from like all over the court for a couple years now. But for whatever reason, when I was actually scripting this video, I was looking at these things throwing bottles and I was like, what if a delivery package like threw something all the way up to like the fifth or sixth floor of a building? And what if we designed buildings and delivery mechanisms different? And then it just like triggered all these crazy thoughts about how throwing things with like precision accuracy could change the way all sorts of different industries are actually like done. Almost anywhere there's an elevator and it's not humans that you're throwing, this thing could be helpful. In a building, what if you remove a window and then you put like a kind of cage type thing there and packages just like boom, hit and they land. Even if they're fragile, if this thing can throw it perfectly, it might just land with such soft arc or maybe we put like a trampoline thing inside of our buildings. But imagine in a construction site, what if you could throw bricks? Like I know this sounds super precise, but a robot might be able to throw a brick and it just like lands like right where it's supposed to to be like a brick wall or just throwing all the stuff that a construction person needs on the first level, the second level, the third level, just, you know, boxes of tools and stuff like that. Like if you take it to the extreme, maybe you could even like throw a t-shirt and it would somehow like fold itself and land where it's supposed to. Imagine a car getting built on an assembly line. What if a robot could like throw the door panel and it would just like, boom, like hit right where it's supposed to and someone else could like throw a pin and it would like land where it's supposed to and then another machine like drills it in or something. Like who cares if it's hundreds of pounds? These are robots, they're super strong. You know, in the case of search and rescue or disaster zones, you could be outside of like the perimeter of danger or like where you can't get over something very easily and you just like throw a lifesaver to somebody or you like throw a fire extinguisher or toss a rope or something, whatever needs to be done. Obviously in like warfare, there's all sorts of stuff from like throwing grenades and bombs and like, weapons and information that could like, like sensors that could like see what's around the corners, all that kind of stuff. You know, like maybe just for fun, like in sports, we have machines that just can like throw perfect spirals and like we use them to practice our receiving in football or in dodgeball or whatever game. Leading to the kind of training that we've never had before, like perfect tennis throwers or baseball throws that you could like learn from because it can just throw perfectly. In farming, I can imagine a robot that just like goes down some lane and like throws seeds perfectly. Maybe it can like mathematically spread them out in just such a way that like it can throw seeds and, and things that help with crops or pesticides or whatever. But in the realm of YouTube, think about dude perfect in the bottle throwing. They might be able to match some of this right now, but no way with the speed and accuracy and what's coming down the road. Now we just need the robots to like, blow, like blow up as soon as they get like something, you know? Maybe they'll be programmed to miss like 50 times and then when it hits, everybody gets excited just for the, you know, just for the drama of it. Now this is a robot made of magnetic slime. I know it's kind of weird because I can already imagine this thing just like going under your door frame and then like reforming itself into some kind of a robot that does something. Crawls up your bedpost and like tucks you in and leaves or something. Yeah. But because it's just a magnet inside, you do need like an electromagnetic room. So you can like adjust the frequency, the field that it's in so that it changes its shape. But as long as you have that room and it's adjustable, then this stuff is like Play-Doh and a machine learning algorithm, an AI algorithm could learn how to manipulate it into any shape that we want. You know, it could make like a giant piece of artwork or it could be the mold that actually you pour something into and then that actually disappears after and leaves you with whatever you've molded. 
And in fact, that could open up the door to some things that are so intricate that a 3D printer can't make them because a 3D printer always has to be touching whatever it was like. Something has to like structurally hold it up against gravity. So you couldn't make something like a basketball with nothing in the center because you'd have to have at least some kind of a hole in there to hold up whatever you did in the center to make the mold. But in theory, this could actually truly just be hovering there. You could build the mold. And then I guess as long as you had a tiny little hole to like extract the stuff out of it, and then you could maybe seal that up, it would be, you know, you could have like a, a true ball with that was empty in the middle. You're using electromagnetism, but you can defy gravity. Now the other idea is they could act like actuators. So inside of say like a robot that has an elbow, you could have these things that are in there sort of moving it around and the electromagnetic control could be because it's surrounded by metal, but they would make amazing actuators. They could be, you know, potentially moved in very subtle and human-like ways. This is them simulating how it could go into your stomach and retrieve something and then bring it back out your throat. I don't know, like maybe a baby or somebody accidentally eats like a sharp thing or a piece of metal or something and you're just like, all right, I'll just swallow this little, like these pills of like magnetic Play-Doh and they'll go in there and like crawl it back out. It's just, this is this is gonna be our future. Dude, when I saw this, I thought it was a frog and then I'm like, why is this stretching so far? And then I, like, I didn't even know this was a robot for first five, like 10 seconds. Look at here, grasping and closing in on objects, pulling those like two wires together. Look at that, you cut it all up and then put it back together. I'd just be so scared if I swallowed it. I'd be like, did it all come back out? Can you like weigh it? Just make sure like there's none of that left in there. Or how about these? Origami plus drones plus gravity and folding means like craziness. This was developed by MIT. You can start with a drone. You can drop one of these origami robots out. It unfolds itself, which allows it to collect a bunch of information, very like Mars rover-like. But in midair, this thing can make decisions if programmed right, if it has its own neural network about what the kind of air pressure that it's in, the direction of the wind that's blowing, a timer or a Bluetooth, any of that information it can use to decide what kind of origami shape to fold into. But and imagine you can drop like 10 of these from one location and they can each fold a little bit differently, making them like paper airplanes. They can glide in different directions. So you can have like a single drop off and they say four of them could end up in like the four corners of a football field. So if you've got cameras on these or you're visualizing things or your radar, your mapping, LIDAR, like maybe military use, they can just coordinate together like that. It's like a military thing. Maybe one gets shot out of the air and then the other one decides to like change its position so that you can collect maximum amount of information. As innovative as these things are, there's still going to be a place for true humanoid robots. So luckily we also got an update this week from Tesla. This is the newest presentation of where the Optimus humanoid robot is at right now. And it's a big step up from the very first video on this entire YouTube channel that I ever made, which was the introduction of the Optimus robot about nine months ago. It has come a long way. That version was sort of silly. It couldn't even stand up on its own. And now we have this. It stands, it balances, it has nice movement in the wrists and hands. So in this demonstration, the robot isn't actually even communicating to like the Dojo computer or the cloud in any way. So this is a self-contained system. And if you watch this channel, you know that even though neural networks take a lot to train, sometimes they can be compressed down into nice little latent spaces, really like compressed versions of the complicated information and stored and ran locally. And that's what they're doing better than pretty much any other robotics company, I think. I mean, I guess the Palm E model is pretty amazing. And the Boston Dynamics robots are pretty good, but they don't seem to be as versatile as these. So I don't know, you could argue that point, but it's definitely kind of in the top two or three right now. Now, how about some yoga? We're talking one foot now. And you know this is all synergetic because there's the new X.AI program that Elon's coming up with to make it so they have their own large language model to make it easier to communicate from camera vision to you know the actuators inside of a robot. Dude, it's so fascinating the world we're going into. So namaste that subscribe button. Help me get to 7,000 subscribers. We're so close.